and welcome to Carcone Carne. I'm James Van Osdell. Back in the car. I am back in the car close to eight years ago. Carcone Carne started as a podcast in a car. The general premise, take interesting people along with me in the car, sit out in that parked car outside local restaurants and brew pubs and have an interview over food. I'm doing it again. My guest tonight, John San Juan of Hush Drops. He is vaccinated. He is boosted. He is safe to share pizza with. In fact, we're at the Village Inn Pizzeria in Skokie on Lincoln Avenue. Uh, Village Inn Pizza on the way. Co-owner Desi will be bringing that. Hand delivering the pizza. I think it's because it's a Monday night. No no way would he be agreeing to that on a Thursday or Friday night. (laughs) But it's a Monday, so I don't know. He seemed pretty cool. Oh, he's the coolest. That, that may be his mo, you know. He is the most laid back, cool dude. Um, but the point is, Carcon Carney back in the car, moving forward. Had a false start over the summer. Did it for a couple of weeks. Then things got really scary. Things are still scary, but less so. And I'm with vaccinated guests. I will still continue to do things remotely as needs warrant and dictate. If I'm talking to someone who doesn't live in the Chicago area, someone who physically can't join me, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to talk to persons of interest so that will continue but the plan moving forward is at least one car-based show a week as is part of the charter of car con carne that was constructed many years ago by great minds uh so john san juan of hush drops hush drops new album the static it comes out friday uh hush drops are a chicago institution the album is coming out on pravda records also a Chicago institution, and John San Juan of Hush Drops, I was talking to a mutual friend, and we have a lot of mutual friends, so you'll never know who this is, but I was talking to a mutual friend, and we were talking about you, and we were talking, started talking about Josh Caterer's band, and this mutual friend of ours said, the thing about Jan, John San Juan, he very quietly elevates any project he's part of, and that was a compliment. Oh, of the highest order, yeah. I would say, yeah. I, I didn't want you to be insulted by quietly, but no, no. Without <laughs> meaning, without fanfare, just you're a classic Midwestern, you know, hardworking dude. You just go in, you get the shit done. Well, yeah, on 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 a good day, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, that's a that's a that's a lovely thing to have had said about me for sure. Um, and I suppose I I meant to guess. No, no, no. I, we have so many mutual. Yeah, I'll never guess. I, I'm know. sure that Venn diagram is is swollen. I'm sure if you were to look on our Facebook mutual friends, it would be ridiculous because we both we've been around this this town for a little bit. Well, I, I am going to thank them anonymously for for uh, for that observation <laughs> and just for the acuity of it, you know. So my l- oldest memory of Hush Drops, I was just starting a radio career, which has long since ended. Uh, I've, I was just starting a radio career, helping out the local music showcase with Carlo Leonardo at Q101. Uh, this was before I hosted the show, and I was interning uh, on the local music showcase with Carla. You were one of the first bands, Hush Drops were one of the first bands I became aware of. I, I remember as you know, a college student saying to Carla, like, who are the cool bands I should be into? And she said, oh, for sure, the Hush Drops. She's like, do you like Pop Smarts? Hush Drops. Carla, God, Carla was amazing. I, I really just have such a great affection for Carla and um yeah she was great you know and she would just as you know because I believe you were there in in the in the studio with us um that you know she would she really would let you be as informal as you wanted to be on her program um I'd like to keep that tradition alive you know with, with your permission oh yes oh it- when I was interning with Carla at Q101, I thought, oh, my God, this is the coolest show on radio because she was playing whatever she wanted to and she was saying whatever she wanted to. She was inviting whoever she wanted to into the studio. No one else got to do that. I thought, well, I, I want that job. And then she moved and I you know, auditioned for it. And here we are doing a radio show in my car in 2021. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I love you. I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed. Technologies have evolved. But we're quietly elevating, you know, uh, the, quite... the form. The form. You know? John San Juan of Hush Drops is quietly elevating Carcon Carne by his presence tonight, or with his presence tonight. Um. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, uh, yeah. So, let's talk about Hush Drops. Let's... This is a band whose sound has always seemed to me to take a look backward at things that have come before sonically but at the same time looking forward to there's a, there's a lot of reverence for some of the groundwork that's been laid by other sound styles musicians etc fair to say yeah yeah absolutely yeah um fair to say you know 
and certainly my own inclination is uh you know just a lot of dinosaur music and of of all sorts but it's all i think it, you could file it under dinosaur and you know not uh including dinosaur junior you know um come on the other side and no one would object and but you know you're going to sound like yourself and you're going to sound like you're living in the time you're living in and oh my god it sounds like there's well, it sounds like Desi's here. It <laughs> Desi. sounds like there's pizza here. Uh, Desi, I'm sorry. You're going to get kneecapped sitting in the back seat. That's all right. I'm short. Oh. Uh, that, that's the price of, of playing along with Carco and Carney. That's Desi. He's the co-owner of Village Inn Pizzeria in Skokie, 8060 Hello. Lincoln Avenue. And we'll talk about Village Inn. We'll talk about the pizza. Uh, we are talking mm, to John smells. San Juan of Hush Drops right now, talking about Sonically, where you came from. I guess, you know, I mentioned that I became aware of you when I was an intern in radio, which to me, John, feels like a, a kajillion years ago. When did Hush Drops officially become a thing? Well, you know, I started using the name at the beginning of the 90s, but it didn't really become a thing until early 93 when I met Joe Camarillo. Mm -hmm. And then it absolutely became a thing. And, you know, I mean, this is just sort of the story I tell a lot these days. Like... I, th I thought I was, you know, I thought I was hot shit. I thought I was pretty good, but then this guy comes along and just, again, you know, we're talking about people sort of quietly elevating things. <laughs> just, I mean, the extent to which he quietly elevated it, like, oh, oh, what well, this is, this is how good it can be now, you know. And we'll we'll talk a lot about Joe Camarillo because there's a lot to discuss regarding Joe. The new album again is the Static. We're recording this on Monday the eighth. The 8th, yeah. So Friday the 12th is when the album comes out on Pravda Records. Pravda, a Chicago institution. Hush Drops, a Chicago institution. It seems wrong with Desi sitting in the back seat with a piping hot pizza mm. and a piping hot bod. It seems wrong <laughs> to not to not eat in, in, while we talk. See, now I'm like getting a look in the rear view. Out, out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, your story checks out, James. Yeah. Uh, here's, the, here's the good news, Desi. Uh, we're recording this. We couldn't go live because of te uh, technological issues. So you, we'll, we'll just take it out in post. All right, no take problem. Take it out in post. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Desi, lean in. Say, I want to make sure we, we get you on camera there. Um, oh, I'm here. Hi. There, there he is. Okay, that's Desi. All right, so Village Inn uh, has been around, uh, like for people who've lived in the Skokie area for a long time, you know, maybe growing up as a kid, they remember this intersection over here on Lincoln Avenue. They remember Alberti's Pizza. Village Inn took over when? 1990, October 6th. Oops. October 6th, 1990. Wow. And, so the, and this is, you know, it's interesting. I've seen a lot of places come and go in Skokie. And I think there, there's a lot of build out and build up that's happening in this area. One of the only constants that I can point to is your place. The, this is yeah. a central watering hole, meeting location. Everyone knows the pizza at Village Inn it's, in the area. It's definitely Skokie Cheers. It is. It, it is. It, I, I didn't want to say something that basic. <laughs> but yeah, it is the Skokie Cheers. We're here recording on a Monday night. The bar's packed. And there, there's what's going on? Bingo trivia. So it's family bingo tonight, and actually someone won the seven thousand dollar progressive jackpot, which is insane because it's mathematically close to impossible to win, and the guy won seven thousand dollars on a Monday night. <laughs> Well, we do have it, the Bears are playing Monday Night Football, and the Bulls are also playing. So, it's good sports on TV for us tonight. But uh, Bingo's always done well, so we got lucky. Someone won seven thousand dollars, and actually, the media is coming out next week. The media, and yeah, the, the, that's you, <laughs> James. The media is here right now, bro. <laughs> True, my bad. <laughs> so we're gonna get coverage next week on this seven thousand dollar winner, and awesome. every game is gonna be a cash game. Whereas before, or like tonight. The last game was the coverall for the seven thousand dollar progressive jackpot, but during the rest of the games were to win like gift certificates or food from Village Inn. But next week, because of the coverage that we're having, we're having a big party. Every game is going to be a cash game, so you have a chance to win a lot of cash next week if you come and play family bingo at Village Inn. Hey, come back here next week. Next week with yeah. Jim with Jim Shapiro. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I mean I can I can bring my my, my kids right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Jim Shapiro didn't want to do this. Does he not um, like me? Oh, you know, it's it's. Oh God, how do I answer? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the dip, most diplomatic way to. It's a certain, you know. I I don't always. Hey Jim, you want to come do this? Hey Jim, you want to come do that? Um, there's there's a it's like a family, you know. Where so Jim Shapiro, member of Hush Drops, 
the one thing I know about Jim for sure is that he is like Candyman. If I say Todd Rundgren three times in a mirror, oh. <laughs> suddenly it doesn't matter where in America Jim Shapiro is, he will magically appear. Oh, you say it once, and, and <laughs> you might get that effect. Yeah. Um, no, Jim is Jim is a silent partner in many ways, <laughs> um, but uh, that doesn't mean that he wouldn't. <laughs> Were he, yeah, in his own way, he is here. Indeed. All right. So, Desi, what, what, what did you bring? The pizza smells amazing. What did you bring? <laughs> what did you bring in the car? So, I brought you a large, thin. Our thin pizza is what we're known for, but we do uh, thick crust, pan crust, and stuffed crust. But uh, personally, I like the thin crust because the ratio is good with the cheese and the um, ingredients. I, I find our other stuff to be too bready. Tavern style is really the way, yeah. isn't it? I mean, we, and you can ask for that, which is extra thin and comes out like a cracker crust. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't... There. Every time I learn new things about Village Inn. All right, crack that open if you can open it up. All right. Closet. All right. I'm going to slide this oh, over here. Oh, so. plates here. Look, this we got great. Village Are you, you going to partake? Right. I, I'll, I'll, I'll have a this. slice. It's a little cramped in here. <laughs> We're going to make it work. This is uh, one of the things I perhaps didn't miss about recording in the car. Oh. Is this a new car? <laughs> no, no. It smells new. I can't tell the wraps off it. So, and here we go. It smells new. Ooh. I think that's Ooh. the pizza. Okay, thing. Wait, let's see. Oh can, you, can you yes. tilt it up a little bit? Like yeah. Straight ahead. That's gorgeous. Huh? Oh, look at that! Look at that. Does it, does it come out? So I'm just going to admire it on my. <laughs> oh, look at that! Yeah, that, that pepperoni is. <laughs> oh, that that is really a the, work of art. Oh, look at the cheese is perfectly browned. <laughs> It really is. I, I like that, that too. Yeah. I'm pretty fussy about the the browned, uh, you know, even if we're making freezer pizza or whatever. Like, nope, nope it's not done. <laughs> How do you guys want to I, slide I, it over? I, I, I there need, you like, go. <laughs> well, let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, that could have right. been ba- that could have been bad. So, okay, here. I think Why don't on. I hold it, John, and you take a piece? Okay, and I I can return that uh, courtesy. I think. Oh, thank God, they're triangles. It's going to make this far right. easier. Okay, now I am holding it. <laughs> there, there are certain things I did not miss about recording in the car. Oh yeah. Oh, this is fun. Sausage. Always fun. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, hang on, hang on. Yay. There it is. There it is. Should I slide back? Take, take it away. All right, coming right. back. Okay, oh, there we go. I got it. Excited Woo. about this. Um, All right. Cheers. Thank you, Desi. All right, You're so welcome. We're, t- we're talking hush drops. We're talking hush drops. Uh, we started to go back to the, the early days of hush drops. There was a time, John San Juan, of hush drops, when everyone in the city, and I'm sure we've talked about this before, when everyone in the city, every musician in the city, was angling to get a record deal. This was in the early to mid-90s. Chicago became a thing. Bands were getting signed left and right. I'm going to read you a transcript of an interview I did with Blake Smith of Fig Dish about a night involving you. Mm. Uh, this is for a book I, I wrote but never got published. But this is about that feeding frenzy time when it, A&R people from record companies were coming out, checking out live music in Chicago. This is from Blake Smith, uh, previous guest on Carquin Carney, uh, talking about a, a showcase. We thought it would be pretty fun. It was us, Hush Drops, Triple Fast Action, and Nectarine. We decided that every band would do one side of Hot August Nights, the double live Neil Diamond record. We did it in August at Avalon. Our rider was just a keg of beer and 10 pizzas. It was just a show for fun. But word got out that these four bands who'd all been getting scouted by labels, all of a sudden Capitol shows up, Geffen shows up. Before the show, Wes from Triple Fast Action said, I'm sorry to be a pussy, but we're gonna play a Triple Fast Action set. We wanna get a record deal. We can't do this in front of all these label people. John from the Hush Drop said, yeah, we're gonna do a Hush Drop set. Nectarine said, we're going to do a Nectarine set. Fig Dish, on the other hand, gave them side three at Hot August Nights. Was that at Thurston's? No, that was at Avalon. Um, <laughs> and I, I must have played some of that with them because I somehow I remember a recording of it with uh, me putting this really overly heroic, exaggerated pick slide right before the going into the chorus of uh, I Am I Said. <laughs> um, so this is a very... very <laughs> You know, uh, very warm memory for me. Actually, this pizza is incredible. Uh, this pizza, <laughs> this, I mean, we got it hot out of the oven. I don't know. This is, we're having a hot, hot November night right now. Oh I'm, my god! I'm here for That's it. Great. And again, this cheese is just cooked perfectly. I love the sausage. <laughs> Did and you the, mention Thurston's? I worked there during college. <laughs> oh goodness! So that that was like around the same era. I mean, yeah, we must have must have crossed paths at some point. 
Well, so Mark Romano was my f- good friend's older brother. And so while I was in college, I he's like, hey, I need someone to do the door. And all those those punk bands, those ska bands, oh, mm. they were so oh, yeah. hard. it was so hard to police them. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up at the Elba Room a lot, Delilah's. Oh, sure, if you're uh, at Thurston's yeah. Elba Room, yeah. yeah. That was a moment. Yeah, and uh, certainly a moment of being able to go out, you know, <laughs> and go out every night. There are a lot of people who look back on that period as this kind of fabled Camelot time for Chicago music. But John San Juan of Hush Drops, you've, you've circled in the orbit of Chicago's music scene for literal decades at this point. From a, a base level, is, is the scene pretty much the same in, in terms of texture politics, or has it changed a lot, or was it different back then? I don't know. I think, you know, I think the world is different, and I think... Um just the the mechanism is different um you know of of star making and all of those Mm -hmm. things um and you know i think there might have been my own approach or my own idea about purpose and i feel like at that point you know i would have been very aware like well you know i remember working at liars club and getting (laughs) you know this ridiculous amount of just uh, you know, promo CDs, and because I was DJing there, and mm-hmm. you know, every week there'd be just all of this. And it's maybe not a kind thing to say, but all of this sort of landfill, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, obviously signed at great expense, recorded at great expense, sent to us at great expense, and um, you know, I I don't know. At some point, <clears throat> you think, well, I don't know what's worse. You know, um, you know. I think whatever. Like, yeah, I got that nice DGC logo there. Mm -hmm. There's a publicist, a promo person, and yet, you know, and yet nothing. You know. Um, Let's let's talk a little bit about the new album, which again comes out on Prompto Records on Friday. The Static. You mentioned Joe. Talk if you if you feel comfortable. Talk about him. Oh. Well, I, I don't know how, like how if it's hard for you to talk about the fact that he's not with us anymore. No, um, not at all. You know, I mean, it was, it's, it's a bummer. You know, it's, it's it's it was and it was you know, certainly from my point of view, unexpected. He'd had so many just brushes, so many scrapes with his own mortality, um, that the routine of him bouncing back became a sort of a very dependable. Right. Um, outcome. And uh, so, you know, um, but, you know, you're always looking for your people. And he was my people. And, and Jim's my people. And we were all sort of each other's people. Um, and so, yeah, there was a period of, you know, just that first few months of shock and grief where... Well, well, now what? You know, what do you even do with your life if, yeah. you know, that type of friend isn't there, that type of collaborator? Because um, it was always both, you know, in that in that scenario with the three of us. Um, and we'd, we'd, I mean, we were so close to the finish line with the record when the pandemic first hit. Um, it was literally one of those things like, yeah, you know, there's a couple more songs we should record. And then that all go, got put on hold. And at some point, you know, I think, like, the fog lifted enough to say, well, you know, this is some really good playing of his, and is this, rep- you know, I kind of want to show the world, yeah. you know, what he could do, and, you know, in this context, and what he enabled us to do, and so on. Um, so that was a big part of the incentive for, well, we it'd be a shame to leave this record unfinished, and not, you know, bring it into the world. Well, all right, I have more questions to ask. I, I've got to, I got to have another piece of pizza. Does yeah, he, I, I did grab two when I, when I went That was the, the right mic. move. Yeah. That was absolutely the right move. I don't know what I was thinking. It's my first pizza, apparently. <laughs> Desi, you okay back there? Yeah, I'm great. So whenever you've asked a question, that's sort of been my cover to... Right. I'm going to say yeah, two just because it's easier. Dig in. 
<laughs> not, I suppose it won't kill me to. There we go. Take another while it's here. All right. I all right, got thank it. you. Oh, fantastic. It's Desi from Village Inn right there. <laughs> so, all right. Speaking of Joe, there's a song. I, there's something about this song, one of the guys. I like a lot of songs on this new album. This song feels like it's in a class all, all by itself. And it's not just the video, which elevates it. Um, this may be one of your finest moments. I, I could live with that. Yeah. It, 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 there's so much going on, so many layers of sound. There's a sitar on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Electric sitar. Oh, God. Uh, and who's doing background vocals? That is Nora O'Connor. Who's amazing. She's the best. And, I mean, boy, talk about quietly, quietly elevating. Um, you know, again, it's one of those things like, you know, we're talking about the song and whatever. It's uh, various constituent, the things that make it so wonderful. But uh, then, well, then you put Nora on it, and it just goes into it just this angelic. whole other yeah. it, place. Yeah, she floats around everything, and it just, it, it's a lovely, lush, textured song, and the video is a tribute to Joe. It, it's a, it wasn't written as such. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, it's, but just fit. It just fit. Yeah, and it, it said, I don't know. It always it said something about us and who we were and you know and our people and what have you that uh, made it a very natural choice for the for the, for the video it's so good we were, getting, uh, we're, the, we're recording this on a Monday the album opens with a song called Monday which has pr probably the strangest ending on the album oh god <laughs> yeah yeah it's like I this know weird that. psychedelic freak out then it just stops I know the label really enjoyed that yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's one of those things in your, you know, in your 50s and, you know, oh, what about that ending? Like, mm, sorry, you know. Um, it is what it is, bro. We're the yeah, artists. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, we, it's funny. There's this, uh, you know, we've, and we're in the era where we've grown up listening to bootlegs and sort of box sets with outtakes and things like that. And you would always hear like, at the end of a take, like you'd hear like the take before it mm -hmm. screeching to a halt or something like that. So that became part of our understanding of music that like, oh, this is a thing that music can do and does. And I love that. <laughs> rather than just, okay, track two, you know. Uh, there's a song in here, Psychic Space. Tell me where that came from, because this to me sounds like something born of the pandemic. Or w was this a pandemic? Song or was this written before then? This was written before then. Um, do you know Corey Hance? Of course, I feel like from you the, do. Yeah. From the cells, who I think lives near Village Inn in Skokie. If and Corey, I'm not um, Corey, if you're listening, I'm sorry we didn't stop by, um, but um, or include you. But he had used the phrase many years ago. Just something about, oh God, I just whatever it is, I don't have the psychic space for it. And it's one of those things that like it just. Yeah, it struck me a little bit like, oh, a very meaningful tur turn of phrase. And then within a few months, I had some song I was working on, and then it just plucked it right back out of the ether. So, you know, thanks to him for that title and and concept. Way to go, Corey Hans. Love you all. Thanks, Corey. Love you all. I'm, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, there, there are a couple instrumentals on this. One is called the Lummox. Now, a Lummox is someone who's clumsy and stupid i don't think the instrumental is kind clumsy. of a i feel like i feel like that song may have the feel of a bull in a china shop to some extent <laughs> i don't know so one of the guys was the first song i heard from it from the album the static new from hush drops out on private records friday elevator i was surprised that was the next single it's a very dreamy kind of song i think there was some well i could tell you my thinking behind that and was that it had that dreamy quality which i, I do think is one of our Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess I think it's one of our better sides, mm -hmm. but also the track itself, the actual performance, um, like the three-piece band. There's a lot of like digging in and um, kind of aggressive playing behind the dreaminess. And I thought, well, again, I, I, I'm trying to let people see that, hear that part of us, to, to showcase it in some way. Now, the Sweetest Plum, I know, has been around for a little bit. I, I remember playing that on the radio like a year and a half ago. That's right, yeah. So um, that's that's just been waiting for its moment. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a weird thing. Um, and I don't know. 
I don't know how other bands work, but I feel like if you're sort of have this active life, this active musical life, and you're writing and you're not writing and you're writing again and you know you're working on a record and performing and all these things that there are songs that sort of go unfinished or get swept under the rug or just you know their time it isn't their time yet and um there were a handful of songs that when we started digging into this record that had sort of found their moment and that was one that joe specifically it's like i think that's like a in its barest form it's a 20 year old song <laughs> or thereabouts and joe is you know hey what you, you still do you ever do anything with that song of yours and you know and then because i'd kind of forgotten about it but you hear it through someone else's eyes where they're sort of bigging it up like that you're like well you know then maybe there's something there does you still good yeah I, great I, we're not ignoring you no i know <laughs> we're, we're, we're loving the pizza again we're outside village inn on a monday night this it's the it's the Skokie mm. Cheers. I mean, there's nothing like this anywhere in the area. This is a social hub. Yeah, I agree. This is the place when a kid played little league. This is where we'd go afterwards. <laughs> That's right. And you know what? They still come back as oh, yeah. adults. They, you know, we do a lot of Niles West reunions here. So, I, well, I see your pictures on your social feed. It's, <laughs> it's like, hey, guess who I'm with from class of '94? Here's someone from yep. class of '86. There, it, it's a focal point. Correct. And that you know, it's. it's part of me selling the business i, I kind of want to remind people if you're in the area stop by mm-hmm. and they do well yeah this is my first uh it's my first time eating your food desi and it's fantastic oh, i appreciate so, that uh, thank you i'm in now thank you I, obviously this is like their their specialty this is what yeah if you're going to village Inn and you can only get one thing get the pizza it's it's awesome uh, you mentioned a moment there's a song on the album called the moment <laughs> is that a xylophone in here uh, marimba. Mar- lovely. But it's not the real thing. I, you know, I don't have the talent to play a marimba in time. I have a, I have a, <laughs> this is, um, I have a Mellotron, and which, as, as you, you probably know, has, um, its feature is that it has actual recordings of other instruments, mm-hmm. and you play it on a keyboard, and the, mar- yeah, so the marimba on there, I was like, well, you know. I can play that. I can I can hold down keys on a keyboard, and it, I guess, it can uh, further the illusion that I am a skilled marimba player. There's a song on the album called "Carrie's Got Acid." Carrie's got yeah. Carrie's got acid. Uh, that sounds like something that traveled via wormhole from 1972 and landed on your album. Oh man, that that's. <laughs> Those are, I mean, those are that. That's my time, you know. Uh, <laughs> it traveled from. It actually traveled from 1992, um, and my memory was at the time that I was, I think, making some effort to emulate people like Teenage Fan Club, mm-hmm. and it was just. And it's also, you know, that song is very concise, and yeah, if you blink, you'll miss it. Well, this is another thing. It's like the thing with the, you know, the very uh, abrupt ending on Monday. Um, it's one of those things, well, who says a song can't just be a very small, you know, just right, just the bullet point, and then, uh, well, let's go listen to the next song now. So we talked about the sitar, the, the marimba sounds, the mellotron, the title track, the static, the guitar is the star of that one. Yeah. Away. Yeah, just all out of tune and... I love it. <laughs> banging away. Well, you know... Maybe, maybe maybe I'll tune less, you know. Uh, also, another instrumental on the album. Very guitar-heavy song. Jennifer's Grandpa. Grandma? Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer's Grandpa, yeah. It's, it's nice. about the human condition, you know? Right, that's that's what I feel when I hear the song. Yeah, I, yeah, and I think that we, we, we've successfully conveyed that in our playing. I, I think if there was, if there were, was, were, uh, an outlier on the album, again, the static, it, it would be the last song. If I had a room, it sounds... Like it's longer than everything else. It, it, I feel like you're you're doing more or trying to accomplish more with that one. Tell me about it. Mm. It's about it's about you know um, in S. I mean, it's about a lot of things, but uh, it, it's about the human condition, James. But um, also within that, you know, finding your people and uh, you know, um, are we your people? Are me and Desi your people? 
You are absolutely my people. Look at us. <laughs> hear that, would, would I do this? Would I? Would I do this? Not, you know, among my people. Um, yeah, that was. Um, you know, we had the band had just drift. We we'd we'd sort of split up for a couple of years. We just kind of hit a stalemate, yes. and and we'd come back together. And I think that all of so us. There's no acrimony. It's just like yeah, we just need. Oh yeah, you just recalibrate. Yeah, I mean, literally, like a family coming back from a vacation and everyone going off to their rooms right. or something. Um, but you know, I think as it. soon as they came back together, it was like, oh man, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't get this out of my musical life when we weren't play- when we were apart. And I think that we're all maybe appreciated each other and our collective selves a little more than we had, you know, the first time around. And so some of that I think is expressed in the, I mean, just in the, certainly on that song, but throughout the playing throughout the record, um, is, uh, it's, yeah, it's just a little more, uh, there's, there's a little more abandon maybe than we've gotten on tape in the past. So moving forward, now that Joe is no longer with us, what, what does Hush Drops 2021 look like? Oh, well, we've got a <laughs> Got a record coming out on Friday, which is very I've exciting. Heard, yeah. Pravda, yeah. Um, and you know, you gotta sell it. You gotta, you gotta get in a car and eat pizza, talk to your friend. You gotta, um, you gotta do some concerts, uh, which we will do. And, so, so uh, who rounds out the band? Well, you know, it's, it's, those are big shoes. So I don't think it'll ever be like a, you know. So we've got, you know. Dave Camarillo now on the, um, but I think for the next handful of things that we do, um, we will be playing with uh, Jim and I will be playing with our friend John Perrin, who mega talent. Yeah, you know John. Yeah, fantastic player. And uh, John Perrin of John Perrin of NRBQ, Josh Caterer band. Yeah, yeah, he's he, he also a, a quiet elevator. You yeah. know, if ever there were one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. Okay, so concerts you mentioned when can we see hush drops well let's see um i believe that we're playing december 10th at the blue island beer company oh that's a fantastic that is a cool place yeah that's right i that's the last time that's the place i saw you you perform uh, with with josh yeah they they do a nice job out there yeah yeah I, i love it and um it was one of joe's favorite places so we're playing there um I'm playing solo this Friday, at, I believe at one o'clock at Valzhalla. I think is this Black Friday again? Is it, is it seems, that seems time to again? come around every year? I don't know. Just, so you, um, one o'clock in the afternoon in Oak Park. Yeah. Wow. That was fun. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And then tomorrow night we're um, doing a preview of the album at Delilah's this Tuesday. Uh, me and Ken Goodman from Pravda will be spinning, and we'll play the record for people. And uh, I thought, well, then who knows, you know? Can you believe in all these years I've lived in and around this city and been in and around this music scene? I just met Kent for my first time this year. I met him very recently as well. I, I like it, it. Kind of boggles my mind. I'm like, how have I not met you yet? He's stealth. I think you know. That's what it is. I think that's a big <laughs> part of it. Um, and it's it's you know, boy, he is he is in my ears and in my eyes right now though, because I am. Uh, Feel like every other record that he puts out, I'm, I'm on, <laughs> you are. Uh, for the moment, for the it's time true. being. Um, it's that is true <laughs> with the Josh stuff and Hush Drops for sure. So I'm rooting, I'm rooting for all of his horses, you know. So it, the new album, just to kind of put a bow on it, the new album is the Static. It is new from Hush Drops. They are back. The album is spectacular. You did a fantastic job with this. Uh, the layers, the textures, the songwriting, the pop smarts—they're all there as expected. Uh, really nice job, John. Thank you so much, James. I appreciate that. Uh, the pizza at Village Inn, Desi, the layers, the sauce, the... <laughs> <laughs> to which I am returning. <laughs> the, the sausage, uh, the, the pepperoni. I, I really... This pizza is delightful. Uh, but it pairs better with beer, doesn't it? As opposed to Diet Coke? Yes. I mean, we're yes. in a car, so we, we couldn't... <laughs> We couldn't have the perfect oh, pairing at Village Inn. Is that what your servers recommend? Uh, if you're enjoying a pizza tonight, I recommend a nice cold beer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So get out of your cars, people. Go in, order a beer, 
um, to truly appreciate the, the Village Inn pizza. Uh, <laughs> so give, give me your hours. Give us your hours at Village Inn. So currently we are open at 11. Um, kitchen opens at 11. Place open, bar opens at 11. Um, until Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, we are open till midnight. Uh, otherwise, 11 o'clock. And if you're in the neighborhood lunchtime, you, you can duck in and get a slice, can't you? Right Absolutely. Um, we do have slices available all day, first come, first serve. Oh, it's all day? You don't cut it off at dinner? Uh, we cut it off probably by 9.30, 10 oh, wow. o'clock. Um, it's, honestly, it sells well because all the stoners come out and <laughs> buy <laughs> Yeah, we can say that now. Yeah, we can say that. Yeah, it's all good. It sells well. We do all right with it. Now, I, I love your place. You know this. Um, and just, I hate talking too much about the pandemic because aren't we all tired of, of thinking back to the past yeah. 19 months? But I, I watched your restaurant. I watched Village Inn survive the pandemic because of community support. And restaurants Absolutely. are such an important part of our neighborhoods and our communities. And when you see restaurants get supported, by a community, it, it's it's inspiring, and it makes you feel like okay, we're all going to be okay. Not everyone's a dick. Like it was just, it was lovely to see you get propped up during that awful, awful time. Yeah, uh, I mean, like what you said, uh, the community was in great. Uh, we made it through COVID by the skin of our teeth. I mean, luckily we had an established carryout with obviously good food that people wanted to order, and that kept us afloat. And uh, like I said, we followed the rules. Yep. Um, Skokie's got their own health department, so when they say you have to shut down, we shut down. While other neighboring villages stayed open, you know, we did lose a lot of bar business to other places. But, uh, you know, we're fighting back. I mean, we're coming back strong, and part of that is because of the community uh, supporting us all the way through. I love it. All right, so in summary, Village Inn on Lincoln Avenue in Skokie. In summary, Hush Drops, new album, The Static. Uh, I love you both. Thank you for this, this is my first time back in the car, like, officially in a while so thank you for helping me break in the car absolutely it's great yeah thank you both this is this has been a joy a joy a delight (laughs) a treasure a peak experience a peak experience a peak experience uh thank you if you uh, have been watching on facebook or youtube much appreciated thank you for listening Uh, if you like what you hear or see please by all means tell a friend